Have we run out of Mandela effects yet? No, but it seems that we have already beat the same ones into the ground millions of times, like the Bernstein's Bear one, or the Fruit of the Loom one. I mean, when are they dropping new ones? Come on, TikTok keeps regurgitating the same topics. Well, I take it upon myself to mindlessly scroll through the jungle of the internet to find you new or at least interesting aspects of certain Mandela effects that you may have not heard of before. Now, this may mean that some people just think certain entries are plain dumb, and I don't blame you one bit, though it may also cause others to re-question their memory and existence. Either way, this is Ariel for the Book of Alice channel presenting 22 interesting Mandela effects. Let's begin. Super Mario Bros. So if you're into the Mario franchise and have played the original Super Mario Bros on the NES, do you remember the first level of the game containing the infamous piranha plant? Well, some recall that after hopping over the first green pipe in the game, the second one would surprise them because out popped the piranha that the first pipe didn't have. Though this isn't the case, if you go and play the first level, you'll see that there's no plants present anywhere in the landscape. Though many remember always losing the power up the mushrooms gave them from the question block as soon as they hopped over the second green pipe, but that doesn't happen now when they replay the level. Piranhas do not come out of any of the pipes. Reddit users replying to this effect state, I remember it being strange there were only plants on two of the three pipes, but I thought it was the first one that didn't have a plant. There was a collection of NES games for the Super Nintendo called Super Mario All-Stars. The graphics had been fixed up to show off the new system. Maybe they threw in some new enemies to show off its better processor and make them more challenging for an audience who would have already had at least one of them memorized. Memories can bleed, but I distinctly remember my dad watching us play. You learn right away that if you're touching a pipe, the piranha plant won't pop up. My sister is touching a pipe, she's about to jump on it, and my dad says, stop, that plant's going to get you. And then she explains how it works. I was sure it was in level 1, but I could be wrong. I'm 35 years old and this was my first game I played hundreds of times. I know all levels and the f***ing plant was in the level 1, for sure. I had played the game with my boy in 2015 when he was 6 on an old Sega and he couldn't pass the first level. The flower got him every time. For that, I am sure that there was the flower in level 1 and nobody can change my mind. You played Mario on an old Sega? That comment was gold, I had to add it in. But do any of you guys remember? there being a piranha plant in the first level? Let us know in the comments. Anybody remember the Taco Bell medium sauce packets? I'm trying to find a picture of the medium sauce packets but I can't find one anywhere. I'm 100% sure my local Taco Bell in New York City had medium sauce packets in the early 2000s, circa 2009, and then they got rid of them when either Fire came out or Diablo was released. I don't remember which. I saw another Reddit post saying it may have been a regional test trial or something like that. I've made a bet that they exist but I can't find a picture of one. So if anyone happens to have a photo of one, can you please link it? Replies the state, I don't have any pictures but I remember the progression went mild, medium, hot. Then when fire was released, they dropped medium. I was bummed because that was my go-to many times when I was growing up and couldn't take the spice of hot. This happened well before 2009, likely the 90s or 2004. An interesting thing to note is that they do have mild, but they also have medium like the Reddit post states. The only difference is that it comes in a jar form, not in the original Taco Bell sauce packets. Could this mean that it could have existed once in a small packet form? Well, if it did, it would have had to been undocumented for years because none of the recorded mild sauce packets produced ever had the word medium labeled on it. This video is sponsored by EveryPlate. I always thought meal kits were too expensive for me, but if you're trying to save money on food and also want to try something delicious, Every Plate is America's best value meal kit. The meals are 25% cheaper than grocery shopping, and the meals are done in 30 minutes or less. They plan and deliver pre-portioned ingredients right to your door, so you can make meal times fit your schedule. They have 25 tasty and delicious recipes to choose from every week, so it's easy to find something that everyone likes. You can find delicious options all day long with up to 22 sides, snacks, desserts, and more. Get started with Every Plate for just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering code BOOKOFALICE149. This is the box it comes in, which is nice and keeps the food fresh. And look at all the ingredients inside. 
they come with easy to follow recipe sheets, which made my cooking experience more enjoyable. This time they sent us barbecue pork sloppy joes to make and eat. We were able to get it all done in under 30 minutes. It came out really good and it was very tasty. So get $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering code Book of Alice 149 And thanks to EveryPlate for sponsoring this video. Metal cannot go in the microwave. This Mandela effect comes to us from TikTok, where many people recall that putting any sort of metal in the microwave was a no-no growing up, and that it would cause the microwave to blow up or for it to spark. So they recorded themselves heating up metal forks in the microwave, showing us that nothing really happens if you do so. Some recall that as children they would accidentally leave a fork in the microwave and it would cause sparks and left a burn mark on the metal utensil. But when they go and do it now, nothing happens, though many people say that they are getting metal mixed with aluminum in this case, due to the fact that certain aluminum products will spark and ignite a fire if heated in a microwave oven, though this is on a case by case basis as some things won't catch on fire and others will. Like this TikToker said, my microwave caught on fire before from tinfoil in the wing container. So let this be a warning, don't go put something crazy in the microwave just because of an internet video. Some are now even resurfacing old videos of people putting forks in a microwave and filming the sparks, claiming it's evidence of the reality shift going on. Do any of you guys remember this precaution? Or do you conclude that it may just depend on the type of microwave you have and the metal you're heating up? Let us know in the comments. What? Rereading the book 1984 by George Orwell and thought I'd share a quote from it that I find interesting. The past, he reflected, had not merely been altered, it had been actually destroyed. For how could you establish even the most obvious fact when there existed no record outside of your own memory? Sound familiar? This goes so well with the Mandela Effect, and I often feel this way when I am trying to explain the Mandela Effect to someone. How can I possibly prove that what I'm remembering was a fact for me at one time if there is no record of it outside of my own memory? The answer is I can't, and that is the problem we face with the Mandela Effect. The Spongebob Box Episode A lot of you may already know which episode this entry is referring to, specifically the one where Patrick has a box with an embarrassing photo of Spongebob in it, but he won't let Spongebob take a look, leading to a wild goose chase for the box. The quest ultimately ends with Spongebob opening the box, revealing a single string inside of it, calming his anxiousness, only for the ending to reveal that the box had a secret compartment that stored Spongebob's embarrassing photo, but the photo is never revealed anywhere in the episode's timeline, not even at the end. Yet many claim to remember an image depicting Spongebob in the Santa outfit being shown at the end. One post states, I remember the photo of that one Spongebob episode, so I think everyone remembers the Spongebob episode where Patrick has a secret box with the embarrassing Christmas photo. Well, I remember them showing us the photo. It was one of those shots where they pay extra attention to the design of the shot. It was attached to a string, and the photo showed Spongebob wearing a Santa outfit, I think. I also think he was in front of one of those purple tree things you see in the show. It was also during the daytime and obviously outside. I don't remember everything of it since I think I saw it 11 years ago. Another post reads, The embarrassing picture of Spongebob at the Christmas party. I'm 24, but as a kid, when that episode was released, I'm sure that they actually showed the picture of Spongebob at the Christmas party that was in Patrick's secret box at the very end of the episode. Now, when they show the episode, it isn't there anymore. No one I know remembers it, but I swear it was there. Does anyone else remember this? Someone goes on to describe it. Pretty sure they showed it. I think it depicts a close-up of him ripping his pants with his whiteies showing through. He's spilling a large bowl of eggnog all over Sandy or something while he looks back at his pants in horror. There's some sort of chaos in the background. I vaguely remember Gary and Squidward and an Xmas tree with a bent top. I don't know. The closest thing found is this clip from Nick Miss Holiday Specials they would run on television in 2002, though it's not really related to the specific episode we're talking about. It could have been a reference to it though. Do you guys remember this scene being in the episode? The Wizard of Oz This film has come up numerous times in Mandela Effect discussion forums, describing things that seem to have a movie had an entire pistol on him. He was strapped up and ready to do jail time for Dorothy. 
Some claim that it's rather uncanny seeing the friendly character brandishing a firearm when they never remembered him that way. Many also remember Dorothy's socks being white until they rewatch it to pieces of merchandise containing the exact quotes many remember, including shirts and posters. The following are some clips in pop culture that make reference to it the way many remember. Lie, my Fly, my pretties. Fly! <laughs> the human kidneys. Think about your kidneys and where they're located on your body. Are you guessing that they're somewhere on the lower back of your body? You've learned this and have even seen it in one of those torso models in school, right? Well, they're actually not located there. Instead, they are found on the middle part of the torso, somewhere near the lungs. Yeah, they're not in our lower back as some recall. One Reddit user states, in middle school, I'm 27, female. My teacher had a torso model in which you could take the parts out. And I specifically remember having to take out the large and small intestines to get to the kidneys and which were located in the lower back. Some believe that the reason why we recall it being in the lower back is because of the pain correlation. As according to Cleveland Clinic, kidney pain is often felt in your sides, back, belly, or groin. It's often mistaken for back pain. Kidney pain can be caused by kidney stones, kidney infections, an injury, or kidney cancer, but that's just one explanation. This one I agree is confused by enough people to possibly be a Mandela effect. I'm 36, and I remember in movies like Rocky and The Kickboxer where people were called for kidney shots, and it always seemed to be a punch in the lower back, right above the hip. I was surprised by anatomical models later in life showing the kidneys so high. 7-Eleven. You probably know this convenience store, either in real life or have seen it in popular media. Now, how do you remember the logo? Simply a big 7 and the word 11 spelled out in all capital letters, right? Well, no, as the letter N is lowercase, which some recall it being the opposite and capitalized, though the only time this was the case was back in 1946 through 1969, not recently, as most recall it being. Do you remember all the letters in the logo being capitalized? Lucy, you got some explaining to do. This has to be one of the most popular lines reused in multiple pieces of media, standing alongside quotes like Luke I am your father or life is like a box of chocolates. Deriving from the 1950s sitcom I Love Lucy, the quote is attributed to Cuban band leader Ricky Ricardo, explaining the accents. The quote, many remember, states, Lucy, you got some explaining to do, referenced numerous times in pop culture. It becomes creepy when you realize that the sentence was never uttered in the show to begin with, not even a single time. Even fans that claim to have watched every episode have stated that the line doesn't appear in the series. The closest line heard is, okay Lucy, splain, and alright, start splaining, but never the original line many remember. So where is this coming from? Well, like the game Telephone, many believe that this can be credited to the corruption of the original phrase, as it was copied from one person to the other. But how is the quote so prominent and repeated very similar if this is the case? Why were script writers so bold to put it in multiple pieces of entertainment? This Reddit post finds something interesting though, a piece of residue evidence. Reading in this New York Post article written by Robert Roker in May 24, 2009, it mentions Ricky's line by saying the earliest phrase on the list comes from a 1951 episode of I Love Lucy. It was a line that Desi Arnaz, who played Ricky Ricardo, was to say many times on the show as his wife entered into one Mad Cup scheme after another. Lucy, you've got some explaining to do. The author says that the line is said multiple times throughout the show. He even claims it's one of the first quoted television lines in history. The most interesting video I found was from Disney's The Brave Little Toaster movie, a film that haunted many young audiences due to its nightmare fuel scenes. A character says, in the words of Ricky Ricardo, then word for word mentions the line most people remember. When I was younger, I used to watch Nick at night. I was in love with the old shows like I Dream of Genie, Welcome Back, Cotter, I think it was on that, and especially I Love Lucy. I know without a shadow of a doubt, I heard Lucy, you have some explaining to do, camera cuts to her old boy face, or might have been followed by a Ricky, point is, it was there in the show, and I would bet money on it. Friends theme song. This entry is in reference to the claps in the iconic Friends theme song. How many claps do you remember there being in the song's start? Do you remember there being three or five, like some of the cast even remember? 
Well, no, it has always been 4, though this is debated due to the technicalities. This Reddit user replying to the Mandela Effect states, there is 5, but the first one is hidden by the other instruments so it is very subtle. This was the topic of discussion while Friends was still on television, cause celebs and hosts would do 4 and it would never sound right. I got to be honest though, to my ears it only sounds like 4 claps and would sound off with 5 claps, though I could get why some would remember it this way. Van Gogh's Ear This one comes to us from Reddit stating, So recently I visited the Van Gogh experience that was touring in my town. It was very cool. I suggest checking it out if it's anywhere near you. Before you get to the room that projected his arts, there were several panels that gave a little bit of his backstory, and I think I stumbled on a Mandela effect. I distinctly remember that he had cut off his ears and melded to a woman who had rejected him. As it turns out, he cut it off in the middle of a bar fight with another man boss move, and then gave it to a woman he didn't even know that worked at a nearby brothel. Like Gold Mandela Fix, it's a small change, but curious if anyone remembers him mailing his ear to a woman that rejected him. Well, I just looked it up, nobody actually knows why he cut off his ear. I was always taught he cut off his ear to propose to the girl he was in love with, although it seems nobody knows whether or not this is actually true, and well, for obvious reasons, Van Gogh isn't here to tell us why he did it. Spider-Man Nintendo 64 This entry is in regards to the simply titled Spider-Man for the Nintendo 64. The plastic game case artwork presented Spider-Man climbing up a high-rise building, looking directly at you, the player. Though here is where the Mandela effect comes in. Some believe that the art found on the game case was also on the cartridge itself. They remember seeing Spider-Man as they inserted the game into the Nintendo, but this isn't the case, as Spider-Man is nowhere to be seen on its artwork. It's simply the skyscraper, puzzling many fans. Some say that it's obviously disappeared, as showcasing the skyscraper alone didn't make any sense. Another Mandela effect pertaining to Spider-Man revolves around his name. Some remember Spider-Man being spilled altogether without a dash or a space in the middle, but if we go and search his name on any site, it will appear with a dash or a space. Apparently the superhero always had a dash or space in his name, though many swear it looks more natural when it's spilled altogether. What do you guys think? Richard Simmons American fitness expert Richard Simmons, popular in the 80s, was a well-known public figure in the exercise industry, recognized for his wild, colorful, and enthusiastic demeanor, also popularizing weight loss programs in the general public, most notably through his line of aerobic tapes, called Sweat Into The Oldies. Most people remember him sporting headbands and wristbands in his exercise videos, though now that some are beginning to rewatch his stuff, they are dumbfounded when they see that he had never worn them in any of his recordings. Interesting. Now that I think about it, he really doesn't wear head or wristbands. I tried googling this and I found a lot of pics of people on Richard Simmons costumes, which often include both a head and wristbands, but nothing for him. In fact, I don't actually think I've ever seen him wear those, but I think he's often depicted this way in parody, namely in that one episode of Rocco's Modern Life. Okay, people, let's go. Let's go if you don't just stand there like slugs on a cabbage. Whoa! What does Brain always say to Pinky? I and my husband both distinctly remember Pinky. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Tonight, we were watching the new Animaniacs, and he says, Are you pondering what I'm pondering? At first, we thought it was just a new rewrite, but I decided to look it up, and it's always been pondering. I cannot find anything where he says thinking, and that's quote, though I did find several memes. That's all I've been able to find though. I've asked several friends, and it seems pretty evenly split between people who remember thinking versus pondering. Pinky in the brain will be right back after these messages. I personally remember watching this series on my PSP on this app called Crackle, where you could basically watch free movies and shows. I do specifically remember him saying thinking, though I could see why I may have mixed up the two, as they essentially have the same meaning. Let me know what you all remember in the comments. Are you pondering what I'm pondering? I think so, Blaine, but I get all clammy inside the tent. Sigmund Freud would have had a field day with you, Pinky. Oh, like sports then, did he? The plan. Raggedy Ann 
American author Johnny Gruel developed the character of Raggedy Ann, who appeared in a number of novels for young children that he both authored and illustrated, creating the iconic doll of the character. According to legend, when his daughter Marcella discovered an old faceless doll that had once belonged to her aunt in the attic, Gruel got the inspiration for the famous toy. Gruel painted the doll a face, sewed buttons for eyes, and gave her the name Raggedy Ann. Sadly, Marcella contracted diphtheria, a serious infection caused by strains of bacteria in 1915, at the age of just 13, after coming into contact with a tainted vaccination needle. Now, many people remember the doll having a very distinguishing feature, that's being freckles. Yeah, many people remember Raggedy Ann with bright red freckles on her face, although she never had freckles on her face of any sorts. Though in one variation, she does have single dots on the side of her eyes, but never full on freckles. Do any of you guys remember the doll having red freckles? The Vitruvian Man Italian Renaissance artist Leonardo da Vinci created a drawing known as the Vitruvian Man. The artwork shows a guy in two superimposed poses with his arms and legs apart and is inscribed in both a circle and a square. It was inspired by the works of the ancient Roman architect. Vitruvius. The Mandela effect here is that some remember him having three arms on each side instead of just two. But no, this isn't the case in the original drawing. He only has four arms. Memes creating Mandela effects for movies and TV shows? Wednesday, Zoolander, etc. I was watching Wednesday the other day with some friends. I have not seen it before and we got to the famous dance scene. I had just assumed all of this time that the spit up version of Lady Gaga's song Bloody Mary was from the scene, referring to the TikTok trend showcasing Wednesday dancing to this specific Lady Gaga song, but it isn't, instead it's the song Goo Goo Muck by The Cramps. But not only that, one of my friends who had already seen the show also forgot that Bloody Mary wasn't actually from the show, it was solely from memes and stuff. Same thing is happening with Zoolander, a popular meme now. I'm sure you've all seen it. It is a scene from Zoolander with a new song spliced in. Are we entering an era where memes will cause Mandela fix with popular movies and shows? A decade from now, will people be like, what? I could have sworn that this song was in Zoolander. Travis the Chimp Incident This entry found on Reddit is in reference to the Travis the Chimp Incident that happened on February 16th, 2009, when the chimp turned on his owner's friend by attacking her morbidly. He was then taken out by police. Travis was an animal actor, appearing in numerous shows and even commercials. He had been surrounded by people all of his life and was accustomed to them. A neighbor even claimed that he used to play around and wrestle with the chimp. He further stated that the chimp was very attentive to its owner and always knew when to stop when he got too rough, though it didn't stop him on that day. The story went so viral that it was referenced in Jordan Peele's Nope, which contains a grotesque chimp scene. The post reads, I am so confused right now. I am watching a video about the Travis the Chimp incident from 2009 and I could have sworn that the victim, Charlotte Nash, passed away a few years after the incident, around 2014 through 2015, because her body rejected the surgical recovery. I remember thinking how it was so upsetting and such a shame that after all the recovery she passed so soon, but in a video today it was mentioned that Charla Nash is still alive and well and that caught me off guard. I did some research and apparently she never passed away. I'm so happy that in this timeline she's still alive, but it's so confusing because I thought she passed away. Did anyone else think this? Call of Duty map In Call of Duty Black Ops 2, there is a map called Standoff. The map made its way into the newer game titled Black Ops Cold War, released in 2020. This brought nostalgia to those who remembered and loved playing on the map, though upon replaying it, one professional Call of Duty player spotted something new on their horizon. It was a bright, yellow public sign pointing away, which he had never seen before, so he tweeted about it, garnishing the attention of many fans who, like himself, were denying that it was ever in the original game Black Ops 2. Nate Shots even reposted the tweet, stating that it was the strongest case for the Mandela effect he had ever seen. How can these people who have remembered these maps so well for the sake of being professional gamers get this wrong? If you go back to the original map, you can even find this exact yellow sign that's supposedly new. There's literally old recorded footage of them playing on the map before and even encountering the strange yellow post. Why were they suddenly forgetting? Though lots of people still swear that it was later added on and that they don't remember it ever being there. Disney's 
Many remember an apostrophe being used when referring to Disney's films, for example the cover of The Lion King reading Disney's The Lion King, as shown here, or Disney's The Little Mermaid, Disney's The Lone Stitch, Disney's Pocahontas, etc. But it has never been spelled out like this on the front covers of those popular Disney titles. It has always been spelled as Disney Aladdin, not Disney's Aladdin. Disney's The Lion King never existed. It has always been Disney The Lion King, which just sounds off. Was this a simple grammar mistake? Do you guys remember it being Disney's? Now, what's weird is that things like Disney's books and games are titled the way many are remembering it. Like The Little Mermaid, the game for the Genesis is titled Disney's The Little Mermaid, and the Disney Aladdin game for the Genesis is titled Disney's Aladdin. I mean, it's like they're purposely doing this. Who's they? I don't know, Illuminati? Certain scientists? It could be anyone. Even our own brains. Mandela Effect and Mass Gaslighting Theory Disclaimer: I am a full believer that the Mandela Effect is real and that there is a multi-dimensional component to it. If that bothers you, I don't care. Go watch CNN or something, okay. So I was born in 1990. I distinctly remember the Bernstein Bears, Luke I Am Your Father, and Six in the City. And I grew up in New York City during the peak years of that show. It was Six in the City, among many other examples. It's even weirder to me that the official explanation that so many individuals are willing to co-sign is just, nope, you're wrong, your memory is unreliable, etc. This is Gaslighting 101. Gets people to question their memories, question their reality, rewrite history, and then accuse them of not having an accurate perception. It crossed my mind that the deliberate use of the Mandela effect would be an incredibly convenient way to create a chasm between those who remember the quote unquote old world and those who are born into this quote unquote new world, rewrite historical events 30, 50 years from now, and show that those who remember things being different are either dead or crazy, slowly and deliberately break down people's ability to trust their own minds, much the way our current social model understands how narcissism works on the individual level, and of course that would make us much more vulnerable and make it easy to control us through other forms of propaganda, as well as to discredit anyone who dissents from official narratives. Just some food for thought. The Rock Quote Can you smell what The Rock is cooking? This is a famous quote attributed to The Rock during this WWE era. Though now he's more known for starring in big Hollywood movies, many were fans before his sudden rise in popularity and remember confused as it changes the meaning to the phrase. It's even quoted the wrong way on merchandise, news articles, and more. Even the description of videos presenting the quote have it wrong. Taking a look at the actual video, he himself states, if you smell what the rock is cooking. And that was it. Thank you so much for watching the video. Consider subscribing if you like content like this and feel free to check out my other videos. Other than that, thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.